Jill Jacobs, Executive Director of Family Builders by Adoption in Oakland, California. We serve children throughout the Bay Area where the average cost of an apartment these days is between two and three thousand dollars a month. I cannot hire or sustain social, master's level social workers at fifteen dollars an hour and in fact this is very embarrassing but my teenage daughter makes fifteen dollars an hour doing babysitting and she doesn't have a master's degree. Uh, she thinks she's smarter than one though. We also are desperate in the Bay Area for bilingual social workers. As I'm sure everyone knows, uh, Latino children are the fastest growing group of children in child welfare. We need to be able to serve them. We need to be able to have fluent Spanish speaking workers and we cannot hire them at $15 an hour. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Sean Hughes with the Alliance for Children's Rights here to talk about kin care equity. Uh, California places children with relatives for very good reasons. Those placements ta placement types tend to be more stable. Children maintain better connections to their family, community, and culture. And placement with relatives can help mitigate trauma and reduce mental and behavioral health challenges. However, now it's time for the state to follow up these placements with adequate, adequate resources to make sure that um, children are not being penalized for being placed with family. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Reed Cannell. I'm with the Alliance for Children's Rights as well. Um, and I just want to mention that um, as regards the inequity in funding for relative caregivers, uh, as we've been leading these conversations with uh, this committee and with your colleagues in the legislature, I've had the privilege of getting to know a number of relative caregivers from around the state, and so I've had a first uh, front row seat um, for the real human impact. Um, I've, I've met folks like Arilena, who has taken in her niece from foster care and spends four times per month in child, uh, what she receives in a CalWORKs payment just on child care. John and Paula, who've taken in two of their three grandchildren from foster care in Los Angeles County, but aren't able to take in the third due to his special needs. Um, those kids would get over $3,000 a month uh, provided for their care with a stranger, and John and Paula get less than 600 for two of them. Uh, and Melody, who from San Diego, who uh, has already downsized her house uh, completely raided her retirement accounts and is uh, selling off her car and other uh, possessions just to make ends meet. So um, I think it's just important to remember that we want, we want these relatives to be able to provide for long-term care. We want to create the foundations for permanency, um, but our current policy undermines those goals. Thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jeannie Emilio, and I'm a 26-year employee of Aspirinet, a statewide provider of foster care, adoption, wraparound, behavioral health services. Um, during that 26 years, I want to assure you that we have employed all the reasonable strategies to reduce expenses and continue to provide high-quality services to children and families. I'm here today in support of all of the requests, but in particular the request for social work interim increases for our master's level social workers, I would love to be able to provide those dedicated individuals with a livable wage that matches the quality of services they provide. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Diane Warren. I'm with the Spiranet located in Fresno County. I'm here today to support the increase in the foster care social worker rate. And I feel like foster family agencies have to have the ability to hire and retain our social worker staff so that the children that we serve get the quality of services and supports that they need and deserve. So thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stella Botella. I am a director from Asparanet, and I'm also a hiring manager. And um, it's very challenging to hire social workers at $15 an hour. It's almost an insult. We have very committed social workers, but uh, attracting a social worker in my area, and we're in a very depressed area, for unemployment, it makes it very difficult. I'm here in support of the increase of foster family social workers. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Maria Ruiz, and I am from the Fresno Spiranet um, office. And I'm an FFA social worker, and I am in support of the interim increase because, I mean, we spent countless hours with, the, with our youth and with their families. And when I first came in, a lot of families were just like another social worker, really. Like, it's hard for our families and for our children to maintain like to to stay to be safe and promote well-being like we can't do that if like they continuously have to change their social workers so it's very important for our youth in foster care to have permanency and you know for them to be safe we need to they need to trust us so we need to keep our jobs and you know hopefully you're in support of the um increase thank, thank you. you very much good afternoon my name is chad valrosi um echoing the same as those before me 
I'm in support of the FFA interim in rate increase. I am a social worker and a foster guardian parent um, serving Fresno and Madera County with the Sparanet. And um, I think the biggest thing for me that I've noted is I came, went to an FFA to be a foster parent with, along with my wife for the extra services that I'd receive. And unfortunately for, for us, um, we had a number of social workers within the course of one year that really did add to the time and the cost to the county for our children that are still in our home um, six years later to move to that guardianship status. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm JoLynn McMillan. I'm with the Spiranet. I represent my uh, Sacramento and Stockton offices. Uh, earlier, somebody mentioned that our social workers make about $15 an hour. And uh, currently in the news, what's going on right now federally is they're proposing a $15 minimum wage. And so although that comes with its own issues, the conversation about our, so our master's level social workers making just over $15 an hour uh, is, is very concerning. And so their uh, work level is certainly that more of a McDonald's level worker. They are master's level, so I am in desperate need and support of the interim social worker raise. Thank you. Hi, I'm Allison Gens. Um, I work with the Spiranet in San Joaquin County, Stockton office. I am a single mother of a handicapped child, and I got into social services because of my experience with an awesome social worker. However, the current rate uh, pay makes it very difficult for me to care for my child and have to go to the state and ask for social services and help with my child um, because of that, even though I'm a master's level. So I'm strongly in support of the foster care increase. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, my name is Cristina Fuentes and I work for Spiranet in Stockton and I'm here in support um, for the social worker rate increase. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Alex Morales and I'm the CEO of Children's Bureau of Southern California and I want to support the interim foster care rate and just to say that this year we are now experiencing a $200,000 deficit for the last 13 years the way we've tried just make ends meet if we've, we've reduced the pension contribution to our 401k plan. We've had to convert our social workers who help recruit new families to become contract workers so that we can afford to pay their benefit package. And we've also had to reduce our offices from eight offices only to two offices, putting the pressure on our foster parents to have to drive more. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Kathy Hughes. I'm president and CEO of ChildNet Youth and Family Services. We uh, operate foster care and adoptions in five counties uh, with headquarters down in Long Beach. And I'm here today um, to provide, uh, hopefully that you'll listen to our need for this uh, rate adjustment. It is, an on, it is on an interim basis. We're very excited about the CCR that's gonna be coming down and hoping for uh, rate reform at that point. But in the meantime, um, We've had to already close an office. We've consolidated space. We really can't compete with the counties and the packages that they're provided. We just are really asking for a, an interim level playing field here as we move forward. So we really appreciate you listening. Thank you. My name is Andrea Helzer. I'm also a social worker with the Spiranet in Long Beach serving Los Angeles County. I'm here to support the interim rate increase. Um, I've seen many offices close uh, around Los Angeles County where we've had to consolidate to one office. I've seen uh, many social workers leave as a result of the low pay wage as well. It, it shows instability for our foster parents and families, so we are here today to support the rate increase. Thank you very much. My name is Jamie McCall, and I'm an employee with Spiranet. I represent the San Bernardino Riverside County. I am here um, to support the FFA interim increase. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Maria Barron, and I'm a social worker for Spiranet Foster Care Services. I work here in the Sacramento office, and we serve Placer, Yolo, and Sacramento counties. And I am um, in support of the interim Increased social worker rate. Thank you. Thank you for being here. 
Um, my name is Vernon Brown. I'm the CEO of Aspirinet and the original Aspirinet social worker. And you heard a lot of from my Aspirinet social workers today. But I want to do a real shout out to all the social workers that are here present and, and all of the social workers in FFAs across the state of California. And as you pointed out in your question to um, Mr. Rose and, and Mr. Lightborn, 26% uh, of the children in foster care are being served by these social workers across the state. We need to recognize that. And, and that is 10,557 children that we're talking about. And, and these are the, it's a compelling reason that we need to be able to sustain the way in which our social work staff are paid a living wage. And really appreciate your, uh, the opportunity to be here in support of the interim rate. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brianna Monroe, and I'm a social worker with a Spiranet serving the Yolo, Placer, and Sacramento counties. And I'm here in support of the FFA interim increase. Thank you. Thank you very much. It looks like that concludes public comment on this item. I also just want to add my uh, thanks and appreciation to all of you who made the effort to be here today, and perhaps more importantly, for your day-to-day -day work um, on the front lines of providing critical services in our communities. Uh, we welcome and appreciate the testimony we hear in these uh, committees. I hope you'll also consider um, setting up meetings with the representatives from your communities um, so that they can be aware of this as we move forward in our budget process. Um, now we're going to move on and I invite uh, Mr. Rose to come back uh, and uh, with Director um, Lightborn and um, we're going to continue on point four in our agenda at page six, the sustainability for the continuum of care reform fiscal audit alignment. Um, that's on page 23 in our agenda today. Welcome back. Thanks. Thank you. Senator Monning, um, given given the uh, uh, how much is left to hear I, today, I'll do my best to uh, stay the, the quick with the next two items. Uh, the, 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 the request we have in front of you at the moment is uh, for $362,000 of general fund and five, for five limited term uh, general auditors to perform federal and state mandated fiscal audits. Just a, a note that the, the, the fiscal audits that, that they do um, are, are um, the process is one where each of the, the providers send in a financial audit report from an independent CPA. We, um, we, anal we analyze those and provide and uh, perform a risk management, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, perform a risk function. And um, those, those audits that are, end up at the high risk are recommended for um, actual audits. Those financial audit reports that are high risk are, are recommended for audits. We have limited resources to do that at the moment. And so this, this budget proposal does, um, budget uh, proposal does two things. One is it per helps us uh, uh, catch up with some of the backlog that we have. Um, there's 60 some odd, 62 uh, backlog uh, audits that need to be done, and at the same time, uh, having these resources will better prepare us to work internally and with the provider community on any new um, audit requirements or audit processes that roll out of our continuum of care reform. I, you've given us the overview, I guess. Um, just further comment on why the positions are limited. Oh, I'm term. sorry. Yeah, um, limited term positions, um, largely because of the the pending changes or potential changes related to um, the continuum of care reform. We thought it would be prudent to to uh, take a look at the the workload required post uh, CCR to determine uh, whether or not. Um, that level of resource is sufficient on a go-forward basis. Okay, thank you. Um, Department of Finance, any comment on this, uh, LAO? Thank you, Jenny Bella with the Legislative Analyst Office. We have reviewed the proposal and we agree that the workload is justified and, and the nature of the positions being limited term, we agree with too. Just to add on to what Mr. Rose said, um, they are clearing that backlog too. So after that is, after they've cleared that backlog, they have this unit developed, there may, the, the resources that they need to 
to continue may be less, so we'll have more information at that time. Great, thank you. Um, any public comment on this item, please come forward. Okay. Um, I'm Doug Johnson with the California Alliance for Child and Family Services. We represent the private nonprofit agencies who operate group home and FFA programs who could be the subject of these audits. Um, our alliance has required our members as a condition of membership to do independent financial audits for oh, 20 or 30 years now. We strongly supported the uh, requirement to make that, or the, we strongly reported legislation in 1998 to make that a requirement for all providers, not just our member agencies, and we strongly support this proposal by the department. If those independent financial audits show some issue that, that requires follow-up, then the department needs the resources to do that. And although having an auditor come to your facility is never a fun thing, it's just part of what's required for effective program management. So we want to, again, support this measure. Thank you. Thank you for your presence and testimony. Uh, any other public comment? Uh, seeing none, we do have a recommendation to approve. I think we'll postpone um, calling that question until the chair returns. And we'll move on to our um, next item five, Title 4E, Tribal Share of Cost. Yes, thank you, Senator Monning. The, this request um, is, is fairly straightforward, despite the fact that the budget trailer language is long and has lots of uh, equations uh, and numbers in it. Simply put, um, the, the federal government allocates the, uh, its percentage of, of federal funding, apportions its federal funding based on the, the federal Medicaid assistance percentage known as FMAP. Um, the, the tribal FMAP is, exceeds the state FMAP, and so this, this, simply, this request simply is to, in essence, buy out the, the, the tribal share of the, um, of the, of the non-federal federal funds uh, with general fund and use the, the uh, higher FMAP uh, for, for the tribe, uh, thereby uh, say, providing a modest savings to the, to the general fund. And it's important because these tribes have been trying to uh, uh, serve their, their young people in foster care for a while, and um, having access to these federal funds would uh, provide much more culturally relevant and appropriate services for youth in their, in their care. Thank you. Um, Department of Finance, any comment on this LAO? We have no concerns with the proposal. We think it's an opportunity to take advantage of the enhanced federal um, matching dollars in order to get these child welfare services programs up and running and for the tribes. Thank you. Um, member questions, seeing none. Um, I guess uh, the question we had is what did the Karuk and Yurok tribes do when they couldn't meet their share of the cost requirement? So the, the, the programs um, are are not up and running uh, at this point because of the, the not being able to access the, the federal funds. So this will these funds will will allow for them to build the infrastructure and support the youth that they care about. Great, got it. Thank you. Um, we also have a recommendation to approve that item, but I think we'll wait until the chair returns. And we'll move, um, let's see, I think that concludes your role today. So thank you, uh, Mr. Rose. Uh, appreciate it. We're going to move to item um, still in 5180, Department of Social Services, um, Health and Human Services Agency, Office of Systems Information, um, and item one pertaining to the April letter, CWS New System Project. That's at page 27 of our agenda. Um, welcome, I'll ask you each to please introduce yourselves and the and floor is yours. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Kevin Gaines, Social Services. Good afternoon, Sarah Dion from the Office of Systems Integration. Thank so, you. So um, we were asked to uh, provide explanation of the details of the, the spring finance letter. Um, it provides a, a, uh, an overall report and uh, an update. 
as well as uh, a request on three um, uh, separate uh, items relative to the, uh, the CWS new system project. Uh, the first is the addition of staffing to explore the option of including licensing functionality uh, and, and the extension of existing limited term positions assigned to the project uh, from two years to five years. The second is the addition of uh, uh, 19 months to the project schedule, which uh, Sarah will uh, uh, describe in greater detail. And third is the addition, the subsequent addition of uh, 47 million uh, uh, one-time costs for a total of 398 one-time for the project. And so relative to the, uh, the addition of, of state staffing uh, related to licensing, um, the, the current federal regulation regarding statewide uh, uh, child welfare system, uh, information systems um, already includes requirements uh, uh, relative to uh, that, that provide some overlap of, of licensing functionality. They call it resource management. The, the inventory, the tracking, the, the monitoring of payments relative to, to, to caregivers uh, that are assigned uh, 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 children in child welfare. And so the, the, the provision of, of functionality through uh, a new system that provides that, um, that increased benefit to, uh, to, to the licensing entities is, uh, would be a, a, a really excellent opportunity to unify a, uh, a function that is separate right now. 39 counties are providing their own licensing uh, uh, functions for children's residential, and the, uh, the other 19 uh, counties are covered by state staff. And so we believe there's an opportunity there to, to unify um, uh, state and counties in the use of that one tool. Um, we think it would be uh, uh, an excellent opportunity as well to make sure that the additional functionality that is needed to, to, uh, to provide other licensing categories uh, that are currently uh, uh, being delivered by community care licensing, we hope will be able to be uh, covered through what we provide in new system. So leveraging opportunity is there and it's huge. Thank you. Um, you have additional yeah. information? As far as, so that one of your other questions was explain the scheduled delay. Yes. So I will do that. That right. would be great. Yeah. Thank you. So in the special project re report, we requested a 19 month delay to the project, extension to the project. And of that, that's made up of a couple of components. So on your agenda, on page 27, you have a, a new schedule. It's that blue bar there. So kind of explain that. So basically, there's kind of two components to the schedule extension. One is in the planning and procurement phase. That's, the, that's what we're in right now. Our, our job right now is to run a request for a proposal and hire a vendor to build this new replacement system for child welfare s services. So that, in that period, we've asked for a 14-month delay. And that's ma a majority of that delay was due to our inability to get resources when we started. The project just started last July, so we're pretty new. We got, we got going, we um, quickly realized we were unable to get resources in place, and a big part of that was that our, uh, many of our resources were two-year limited term, so we were unable to recruit and retain people. Um, recruiting was tough, and then even retaining. We had four people show up and within the first two months quit to go to get permanent jobs. So we escalated that issue, and um, thankfully everybody listened, our executives, Department of Finance, California Technology Agency, and they answered by saying that we can now have five-year limited term positions, which is great. It'll take us to the end of the project. So we, we feel like that has solved that problem. In addition, we asked for some more time to just do the work that we had to get done to prepare the documents and our control agency documents and get all that review completed. So that takes the schedule. If you look in the middle of the graph, that means that we'll have um, releasing our request for proposal next April and then have a contract award in September 2016. Then beyond that, we call that the development phase. So the DD and I in that little space stands for design, development, implementation. So we asked for five additional months during that period. And that was born out of the, um, again, we're in the planning phase. We looked at all the other projects that are going on in, in California at the federal level and looked at some of the challenges that they had. So if you look at, um, I'm sure you read the paper last summer, looking at the healthcare.gov, all the issues they had, 
um, going on. So a big lesson learned was that there was not enough testing done before you brought a system live. So everybody said, you know, what, we wish we'd had more time to ring out the system before we tried to take it out to, to you know, full deployment. So that's, that's our big lesson. So we're asking to add additional time for testing during that phase. So that pretty much explains the 19-month delay. And in terms of the total project costs, um, mm -hmm. have those increased? Yes, so the total project cost then has gone up $47 million. And your question was how much of that was for the delay itself? So of that, the $31 million is for the delay. And of that, that's 15.6 um, general fund. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, back to you, Madam Chair, where we've heard the affirmative testimony, but not DOF or LAO at this point. Okay, thank you very much. Department. Before we go to that, maybe with uh, Senator Morrell here. We can just yes, Senator Morrell. Let's, let's go back for a moment. Let me just figure out where we are. So we can go back to page six of our short outline. Those two items. So it's page five and six, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, Senator Morrell, uh, uh, we are going to vote on sustainability for continuum of care reform fiscal audit alignment. Um, I'll move that item. Moved by Senator Monning. What is your pleasure? Okay, very good. That's three eyes on that item. Thank you very much. And then one other item. This is the tribal share of cost item. And I'll move that item also. Moved by Senator Monning. Senator Morell, what's your pleasure? Uh, abstain. abstain. Okay, two eyes. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. All right, so um, back to the April letter, CWS New System Project, um, Department of Finance, any comments? Legislative Analyst. Good afternoon, Madam Chair um, and Senator Monin. I'm Lourdes Morales with the Legislative Analyst Office. We do agree that the proposed positions are needed to effectively develop the child welfare new system. However, there are ongoing conversations regarding the nature of those positions. It is often challenging for departments to recruit and retain limited term positions, and it can create a risk for the projects. The administration is proposing the use of five limited term positions in order to bolster the, de the department's ability um, to overcome the staffing challenge. However, recent conversations with CalHR as well as the Department of Finance indicate that these positions would still need to be advertised and a new person hired every two years. And therefore, um, approving the positions for this five year term really doesn't address the crux of the concern identified by the department, which is recruitment and retention. However, authorizing the positions on a permanent basis also doesn't seem like the best approach. Permanent positions are used when workload is ongoing, and in this nature, the project has a finite end date of April 2019. Um, given the continued discussion regarding this issue, um, we do agree with the staff recommendation to hold open pending um, further discussion. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any public comments? Mr. Thank Mecca? you, Ma Madam Chair. Frank Mecca with CWDA. Um, this, this system that we're talking about, other than the social workers who do child welfare services, is the most important tool that we use to assure the safety and well-being of children. The reason we as a state are replacing the current system is because it meets less than 40 percent of the needs of the current workers. My members are extremely concerned about the slip in the schedule, and we absolutely agree that the resources are necessary to get the system back on track. For reasons mentioned by the Legislative Analyst Office, we're extremely skeptical that moving from a two-year to a five-year limited term position will change the attitudinal difficulty that's caused the inability to hire in the first place. We are part of the ongoing discussions and we're very comfortable with the items staying open and being part of those discussions, but we wouldn't rule out the possibility of permanent positions. We run huge bureaucracies, we run into this hiring problem. And sometimes we have to find other permanent work to shift people into, or we're going to forego the work in the short run. Given that this is about keeping children, literally life and death for abused and neglected children, we believe we need to err on the side of getting the people in the job so that we can get the job done and worry five years from now about how we transition those positions into other functions. Thank you. Um, this item is recommended to be held open, so without objection, we'll move on to the next item. Thank you all very much. Next item, uh, we're 
still with the Department of Social Services, Cal Fresh. We're going to have an overview. I would like to welcome Linda Patterson, Branch Chief.